we gather acknowledging the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of this land to praise and worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Good day and welcome everyone. We celebrate this 33rd Sunday of the year. We're coming to the end of the liturgical year at uh, St Thomas Church, St Thomas the Apostle in North Greensboro. We remember in our prayers especially Joseph Podlezak and Lynette uh, Zadell who died recently and we commend them to God and ask that God draw them into fullness of life in his love. Today is also a World Day of Prayer for the poor of all nations. And it's a reminder to us that uh, there are peoples of this world who are poor because there are some who are wealthy. We have the wealth of the world, the riches of the world that can easily um, be shared amongst all people. Poverty should not exist. So as we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we're made aware of the ways that we, even in our own ways, participate in keeping people poor. Let us ask for healing and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us give glory and praise to God. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest. And on earth, earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless, bless you. We adore you. you. We glorify you. We give, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son, Son of the Father, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, ever-living source of all that is good, from the beginning of time you promised us salvation through the future coming of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to drink of his truth, and expand our hearts with the joy of his promises, so that we may serve you in faith and in love, and know forever the joy of your presence in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's now listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A perfect wife, who can find her? She is far beyond the price of pearls. Her husband's heart has confidence in her. From her he will derive no little profit. Advantage and not hurt she brings him all the days of her life. She is always busy with wool and with flax. She does her work with eager hands. She sets her hands to the distaff. Her fingers grasp the spindle. She holds out her hand to the poor. She opens her arms to the needy. Charm is deceitful and beauty empty. The woman who is wise is the one to praise. Give her a share in what her hands have worked for and let her works tell her praises at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are, Happy are those who fear the Lord. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. Happy, Happy are, are those, those who fear the Lord. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Happy, Happy are, are those, those who fear the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion in a happy Jerusalem all the days of your life. Happy, happy, happy adults who fear the Lord. 
A second reading is from uh, the letter of, first letter of St Paul to the Thessalonians. You will not be expecting us to write anything to you, brothers, about times and seasons, since you know very well that the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. It is when people are saying how quiet and peaceful it is that the worst suddenly happens, as suddenly as labour pains come on a pregnant woman, and there will be no way for anybody to evade it. But it is not as if you live in the dark, my brothers, for that day to overtake you like a thief. No, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness, so we should not go on sleeping, as everyone else does, but stay wide awake and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We welcome the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Live in me and let me live in you, says the Lord. My branches bear much fruit. Alleluia. Thank you, Kate. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a man on his way abroad who summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, each in proportion to his ability. Then he set out. Now a long time after, the master of those servants came back and went through his accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. Here are five more that I've made. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with even greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Next, a man with two talents came forward. So he said, you entrusted me with two talents. Here are two more that I have made. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with even greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Last came forward the one who had been given one talent. So he said, I heard that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered. So I was afraid, and I went off and hid your talent in the ground. Here it is, it is yours, you have it back. But the master answered him, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered. Well then, you should have deposited my money with the bankers, and upon my return, I would have recovered my capital with interest. So now take the talent from him, and give it to the one who has five talents. For to anyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel today, we are introduced to a man who entrusts his property to servants while he goes abroad. He's an enterprising employer. He hopes that his own flair and daring in business matters will be reflected in his servant's attitude to this new challenge that's been given. He doesn't instruct them what to do with the talents. He trusts them. He trusts them to use their own initiative and imagination in this economic adventure. So, as in all stories and jokes with three characters, our attention is really focused on number three, the third servant portrayed as the one who 
refuses to involve himself in the spirit of the enterprise. He believes that the safest way to handle his talent is to bury it and return it intact as it was to his master. And Jesus is seen to be making the point against the scribes and the Pharisees. Their chief aim was to keep the law which they had been given exactly as it was, not to change it, not to develop it, not to alter it in any way. In their own phrase, their mission was to build a fence around the law. It's as if they wanted to put the law into a state of perpetual coma or paralysis. That way they would avoid the risk of its walking the streets where it would have to change because it'd be challenged, where it would have to grow according to the conditions that it met. Like the man with the one talent, the Pharisees are seen to have an investment in keeping things exactly as they were. And it's for that stale attitude that Jesus condemns them. In this parable, Jesus tells us that there can be no religion without risk, no religion without adventure, no religion without enterprise, no religion without change. Willingness to dare, to change in response to the needs of our times, to understand and promote the Word of God in ever new contexts, to read the signs of the times and how the Spirit calls us to be church in a world of change. These are essential to our faith. The parable speaks to us about God and God's kingdom, of intimate relationship with God, of inter intimate relationship that is lived out with one another, a way of being in which God's standards are valued and lived out. We've lived too long like the Pharisees, whereby as a church we've held on relentlessly to tradition in a way that we've boxed it in, so that it says nothing of value to so much of our society, as, it, as is evidenced by our society's refusal to listen to us anymore. But the reckoning is here. The master of the property has returned and we are to give an account of how we've done business with the gift that we've been given. This time of pandemic and coincidentally the current plenary council in Australia, can it be the beginning of a time to reimagine the church? We've got to begin to reimagine the way that the world operates. But as a church to reimagine who we are to be in the world and what we are to do to be faithful to our mission of promoting God's kingdom, God's values. A prophetic moment that will demand of all the church change. And that's what's asked of us at this time, all of us, to embrace change and not to be looking back to what we think were the good old days. The conclusion of the same-sex marriage plebiscite has become a challenge to us to accept that society has demanded that we value and honour people who want to accept same-sex unions officially, and at the same time to live out and promote well our understanding of sacramental marriage between a man and a woman. The assisted dying debate of last year concluded with legislation permit, permitting it in various circumstances. The challenge for us as church is to do everything that we can to promote the development of the palliative care of the dying and living out a clear and transparent belief in the dignity and the value of life as gift as well as an all in the mystery of dying. The church can be considered in more recent times as the lazy steward who's buried the, the treasure, 
not believing in its adaptability to all times and societies. In large part, because we haven't listened to what people around us are saying by their pain and yearnings. The Plenary Council of the entire Church in Australia that is now to conclude at the end of 2021 can discuss and legislate on a wide variety of issues including matters of faith and morals and discipline and also consider the critical issues of our own time and determine how we can respond to them consistent with the gospel values and in a way that speaks to people in our own time who have a need to hear good news. It can be for us an opportunity to reimagine ourselves as a church and discern how we do business with the talents that we've been given to develop. I'd like to read to you something that speaks to me, and as I'm sure it does to all who've remained faithful to the church, and it's written by Carlo Coretto, a great Catholic social activist and a contemplative who struggled with his love-hate relationship with his church. And he expressed it in this way, in these words. How much I criticise you, my church, and yet how much I love you. You have made me suffer more than anyone, and yet I owe more to you than to anyone else. I should like to see you destroyed, and yet I need your presence. You've given me much scandal, and yet you alone have made, made me understand holiness. Never in this world have I seen anything more compromised, more false, and yet I've never touched anything more pure, more generous, or more beautiful. Countless times I have felt like slamming the door of my soul in your face, and yet every night I have prayed that I might die in your sure arms. No, I cannot be free of you, for I am one with you, even if not completely you. Then to where would I go? To build another church? But I could not build one with the same defects, for they are my defects. And again, if I were to build another church, it would be my church, not Christ's church. No, I am old enough to know better. Let us now profess our faith in the God who loves us. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. God's word comforts and encourages us in life's journey. Strengthened by its teaching, we now turn to our God in prayer. We pray that all leaders in the church may govern with a servant heart and a caring spirit for the whole body of Christ. May each one continue to grow, grow in grace and show forth in their lives a genuine love for those to whom they minister. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray on this World Day for the poor of all nations and the people who already enjoy the abundance of creation and the blessings of prosperity, that their hearts may be lifted up to the needs of the poor and afflicted and partnerships between rich and poor of the world may flourish and grow. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, during this COVID pandemic that you draw close to all anxious hearts, troubled minds and businesses who face financial stress and economic heartbreak. Please give us all calmness and wisdom as we move forward out of lockdown to be with each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the sick and for those who care for them. May your grace carry them through their illness into a time filled with hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Joseph Goldlesack and Lynette Shadell, and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray in this memorial month of November. God, our refuge and our strength, you have made death itself the gateway to eternal life. Grant to those who have gone before us the joy of your presence. Help us to always hold our loved ones in our hearts. Meet us in our sorrow and lift our eyes to the peace and light of your constant care, that your fear will be dispelled by your love and our hope renewed by your promise. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pause for a moment as we reflect on our own needs and the needs of those who are dear to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all consolation, you reveal yourself to us as a God of love. Help us to always respond to you in love. We make this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share of the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the hearts. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We take the third Eucharistic prayer and the third acclamation. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather all people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your Church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph her spouse, the Apostles and Martyrs, Thomas, Mary McKillop, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, our merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you of their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And now we pray for peace, peace in the so many troubled places in the world, peace in our own communities and families, and especially peace in our own hearts, a peace that only God can give. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. And in a COVID way, with those you, who you with, let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not your word, that you should enter under my roof. But only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to fullness of life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long to know your presence in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Open my heart and mind so that I might be more deeply aware of your presence within me and around me. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. May I never be separated from you. Let us pray. Father, may we grow in love by the Eucharist we have celebrated in memory of the Lord Jesus, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just a few notices that I wish to bring to your attention. Um, you may well be aware that uh, this weekend, this coming Wednesday, um, Father Lennon Fenimiathum, who's been with us for the last two years, has been moved on to another parish. And uh, Father Dixon George uh, is coming to us, having been in another parish for two years himself. The practice in the diocese at this time is that uh, assistant priests usually stay for a year or two at most in the parish, and for their own welfare, um, for their own good, uh, so they might have more experienced, they moved to another parish before they're appointed for the responsibility of being pastor to a community. So we wish Lennon well as he embarks on his new appointment and I'm sure that we welcome Dixon as he comes amongst us. Um, we're undergoing a project of 
making contact with all parishioners um, by phone just to see how they're going. It's a, an enormous task and we've had several people who have taken on the responsibility and we're trying to spread it. But we have something like 8,000 people um, on our database. So uh, if you get a call, um, it's not necessarily from the call centre and it's not asking to sell anything. They're ringing on behalf of the parish just to see how you are. Um, and we continue, even though our lockdown is not as stringent as it was, and we hope that uh, over the next week or two it'll become better and we will have a greater possibility of meeting, um, we will continue, at least for the time being, to have morning tea on Zoom across the three parishes. And you can join into that uh, on Fridays from 10 to 11.30 and uh, just uh, contact your centre on the email address uh, to join in. Uh, there's a book that's been, a beautiful book that's been written, uh, Never Work With Animals or Children, and it's a fundraiser. It's written by one of uh, St Mary's parishioners, John Casamento, who's been a professional photographer until he retired a few years ago. And uh, the book is intended, its proceeds, to go to uh, the Fontan Registry in gratitude for his grandson Noah's uh, living a normal life with the completion of the Fontaine circulation almost 15 years ago. So details of that are in the news sheet. Um, just another call, almost a final call for submission of stories and photos to our e-book that we're writing on um, COVID home stories uh, from the Diamond Valley. Uh, the email address is there to which you can submit those and uh, we hope to put that together early next month. And in continuation with our last session on the wonders of creation, we're holding another one this coming Thursday the 19th from 7.30 to 9 and people can continue on if they want to ask questions. And it's looking more at uh, uh, the book of Genesis, um, the creation story of Genesis, and the, um, the awesome discoveries of the sciences uh, uh, in the last 50, 85 years. So um, to look at how we can um, see that they're not contradictory, but rather how they complement one another. So that'll be, as I say, Thursday the 19th, and you can book in on the um, email address that's supplied. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and the joy of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, and have a great week, and take care of each other. Keep Thanks, safe. God. Thank you, Father.